I have known uh, Johnny Winters for about 17 years, and I have never ceased to be amazed at his, his talent. He's genuinely a, a funny, funny man. And uh, he has his own television show syndicated around the country. And on April 6th, he will be up uh, at the Sahara Tahoe. Would you welcome, please, Jonathan Winters. <laughs> Hello, John. Oh, gosh. <laughs> pretty, I, uh, pretty thrilling, huh? Well, it is. I wore my new sweater. <laughs> new for me. Uh, it was in a fire sale, and I grabbed it up. <laughs> I'm not proud. I, a lot of my things are used. Uh, the shoes were... I bought those in the same sale. Not ashamed of that. <laughs> There's a fire sale, and that's about all there is to that. I gotta tell him, <laughs> I gotta tell him what you did to me. You may not even remember this. Remember when Jack Parr was doing the old CBS morning show? Right. I think that's the first time you were really yes. ever appeared on television, about 1955, 56. And we did it out of Grand Central Station. And we did two shows, one at 7 o'clock, which played in the East. And then at 8 o'clock, the Midwest and West would join the network. And then you had to go back and repeat the first hour of the show live for the West Coast, again. And I'd met you the first time then. And I was back there filling in for Robert Q. Lewis on a daytime show. And you called me at a hotel once. You won't remember this at all. There are a lot of things. But I remember that. you. I know there, there are many things you I have done. I don't remember. I, yes, a little I've, dim. I, uh, my mind has failed me a number, <laughs> a number of times. But on this particular thing, I was staying at a little cheap hotel back there, a real cheap hotel. Yeah, that's right. And I got this call one day. And it was from you, although I didn't know it at the time. And I was just finishing up the show. I said, Johnny Carson? I said, yes. He says, Mr. Weldon, I'm with J. Walter Thompson, uh, advertising agency in here in New York. My ears, just the whole scalp went up. <laughs> and he says, we are doing some commercials for the Buick Company. I remember it so well. And he says, we'd li like you to be our spokesman. And uh, of course, there's uh, $2,000 in it and a new Buick. And right then, a dollar would have been, you know, didn't have any money. And I knew that you knew that I had to go back to California. I had to come back and do a show I was doing, and I wouldn't be there. So I started to do, you know, little uh, disclaimers like, I'd love to do it, Mr. Weldon. And then you started to get nasty. <laughs> Just a little bit. Well, according to me, you can't do it. That's the trouble with you California guys. You come into town, <laughs> give you a job, you don't want to stay. And then you got really angry. And I'm practically dying. And I could have killed you at that time. And then he said, that's Johnny Winters. And I could see the Buick just flying away. And the... <laughs> I'd already spent the $2,000 on the house driving the car. You, you did little, little cutie things, didn't well, you? Well, I still call guys up. And I still answer the phone as different people. I love to do that. One of my favorite stories, um, I love to, well, maybe, you know, be an old person. Or, and someone will say, uh, hello, uh, is uh, Jonathan Winters here? And say, no, uh, the boys, the boys in the basement uh, is uh, combing the kitty. And, uh, I'll say, uh, well, who's this? Well, I'm just an old man who wanders around his house. <laughs> and uh, a lot of times you get odd reactions from people <laughs> get in. But one of my favorite stories was, I have told it before, but it is a it is a fun story. Several several years ago, a number of years ago, I'd gone back to Ohio uh, to see my mother and uh, my stepfather and, and several relatives. And uh, always at, it was at Christmas time, and uh, all of us were feeling no pain. My stepmother, or my, rather my, my stepfather was certainly in rare form. <laughs> And my mother had had a few, and uh, I'd had several. And, uh, Drink of your choice. Yes. A uh, little touch of the grape. And uh, like many people who uh, imbibe in, in, in drinks, uh, you get uh, telephonitis and uh, want to call the world. And so I, I wanted to call a friend of mine, and his name was Art Lytle, and he and I had gone to school together, and he was a funeral director. And uh, so... Uh, I called him, and I assumed a character, and uh, I knew that he didn't, hadn't seen me or heard my voice in a long, long time. So I knew I was home free. And uh, I called him up, and uh, he uh, owned the, uh, the Jack and still does to this day, the Jackson Lytle Funeral Home in, 
in Springfield. And uh, so I said, uh, hello, is, uh, is Mr. Arthur Lyle Jr. there? And he said, yes, yeah, speaking. And I said, uh, is this Arthur Lyle Jr.? He said, yes. I said, well, this is uh, Elwood P. Suggins, and I live out on the Lakewood Beach area. And my brother uh, passed away here Sunday week, and uh, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was wondering if you could do a job on it. <laughs> and uh, there, was a, there was a long pause. <laughs> and uh, he said, how long did you say he'd been dead? <laughs> I said, well, he passed away here Sunday week. And he said, good Lord, man, where have you got him? And I said, well, most of our people are from Boise, and I didn't want them to have him come that far just to look at grass, you know. So uh, what we did, we put him out there on the porch and <laughs> set him up again in the lattice. <laughs> and a uh, cold spell set in, just kept him harder than a cart. <laughs> uh, uh, <clears throat> I remember the other day, uh, it, uh, sun come out, and he commenced to get fleshy. <laughs> His uh, face dropped a little bit, and uh, but I tell you, Mr. Lytle, even in death, there's humor. My, uh, my eldest boy, Lamar Jean, uh, twisted the deceased hand around and put a softball in it. Now, <laughs> Lytle lit in the maze. Good heavens, I've never heard anything like this. So then, I, of course, I broke in. I said, well, it's Johnny Winters, and he <laughs> said a few things. <laughs> Those are some of the little things that I... What is the wildest thing you've ever done? Uh, the wildest thing? Yeah, that, that you remember. <laughs> now, the reason I can say that, because we know each other. From, yes. we, we have spent some evenings together. Oh, a number of good evenings. Uh, when we had been talking yes. to bushes at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, I remember. I, uh, uh, I guess... Uh, I'm trying to think the wildest thing I ever did. Mm. Well, I remember one story. Uh, very well. Uh, I, I was sitting, uh, this was back east, I was back in New York, and you were talking about an advertising agency made me think about this. And uh, telephone rang, and uh, I went to the telephone, and I decided I would become a character, as I just mentioned. And a man said, uh, hello, uh, is uh, Jonathan Winters there? And I said, that little funky man's on a little tractor, and he's out in the backyard cutting some grass. <laughs> So uh, he said, uh, he said, uh, who's this? And I said, this is Sam. Who are you? And he said, well, this is uh, Mr. Cavendish, and I'm with uh, Ben and Bowles or something, and I'd like to talk to Mr. Winters. He said, you mean Johnny. Let me see if I can find Roundo. <laughs> so, gee, you're going to see this guy at the other end of the phone. So uh, I, I then uh, shifted my voice and said, uh, Hey, Rondo, come on in. It's a phone call for you. Get on it. So I said, uh, Hello, uh, this is uh, Jonathan Winters. And, uh, and then the guy at the other end said, uh, Who was that I was talking to? I said, I'm on the phone, too. <laughs> It's fun to do these little voices. <laughs> yes. Upset a few people. Here's, uh, here's Ed to tell you about a great new opportunity to try one of the most remarkable vacuum cleaners ever made. We're back. My guests tonight are Joan Rivers, Judy Collins, and Johnny Winters. Uh, your syndicated show has been renewed, I hear, and you're going to do something else on uh, CBS? Yeah, we... Uh, we can mention that. I hope we can. Of course. Because the networks here, they can stand that, I think. Uh, I, I always know there's a, there's a little friction, you know, bet, between the three, but what the heck, they're all making a lot of bread. Uh, I, uh, I start doing uh, my little show. Uh, it's a half hour, and it will start on CBS uh, here in Los Angeles, 7.30 to 8, uh, around the middle of April. I don't have the exact date. I hope it'll be around the middle of April. That's what they promised me that. And then um, I'm going back east um, to New York uh, on Monday, and uh, it, it'll be back there. Uh, it'll start, in, it's already in Philadelphia, in your hometown, uh, Big Ed. And I was discharged, you know, in, in, in Philadelphia. Yeah. Mar fellow Marine. Fellow Marine. That's right, you I, were I was a Marine. corporal. He was a colonel. Yes, that's right, I remember. He... And there's an awful lot of difference there. <laughs> 
Rarely uh, do you guys mingle with the enlisted guys, right? So, <laughs> right, kid? <laughs> oh, well. You didn't uh, you didn't like the service, if I remember. We oh. sat around talking about that several nights. You No, I uh, I got along fairly well in the service. No. Uh, I was always disturbed because I didn't know where I was. <laughs> and uh, unless you're an officer, you see, you're not clued in. And you're not given the, the top papers, which I felt I should have had at least one or two papers. <laughs> and uh, I kept asking questions, which is always trouble. <laughs> Running up to a, a captain, you know, or a colonel like yourself and saying, where are we, sir? <laughs> None of your business. Move out. <laughs> and I was always moving out. Uh, I was frightened a great deal of time. Uh, I was frightened of the guys. I, uh, I didn't understand a lot of them. They didn't understand me. I was kidding all the time, you know. I'd be in grandma one minute. And, uh, hey, honey, you know. Uh, that would, uh, a lot of guys didn't understand That me. would shake up a barracks late and at I night, turned, yes. I'll never forget, to a full bird. Full bird. Bird colonel. <laughs> and did a voice on him, which uh, I'll never forget. And I said, oh, sir, what is your name? <laughs> you, uh, little sense of humor. Don't do that in the Marines very often. <laughs> so I was misunderstood a great deal of time. But I got out eventually. Uh, I knew I would. I had good feelings about that. <laughs> and uh, I got out. I spent two and a half years, and then uh, I wandered around aimlessly. Uh, looking for odd jobs, and uh, being odd, I found a lot of odd work. <laughs> we were talking about the first thing people ever remembered. Judy remembers at two years old or three and four. Uh, do you remember back that early when you were a kid? To three oh, and four I years? Oh, to one. To one? I remember the beads on the ankle. <laughs> oh, remember the blue beads and the nurse putting them on? <laughs> uh, no, I... That's... Uh, <laughs> That's, uh, that's pretty far back, no. <laughs> I, uh, I remember, I, I'd have to go along with the girls. Yeah. I remember back about four. Yeah. Yeah, about three, three or four. And I was an only child, as you know, Johnny. Yes, but, right. uh, I didn't have any brothers or sisters, and that... Was yeah, it lonesome? It was for a while. Yeah. It was for a while. And uh, uh, then I realized that, uh, uh, that uh, any goodies that would be handed over would be handed over to me. <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, I... Uh, <laughs> I was an unusual <laughs> child, you know, you can imagine. Yes. I, yes. I, I was frightening old people a lot, you know, <laughs> scaring them on the porch or something like that. Uh, and doing, in, in class, I, I, I was a slow student. I'd, I'd like, I was dumb. Uh, That's what he's calling, he's slow. Teachers, yeah, yes. the teachers would say the boy's slow. Uh, <laughs> but I was, you can imagine, I, 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 the little girl next to me, somebody like yourself, I go, <laughs> and the girl would laugh and then point at me and say, Johnny Winter's doing things, Johnny Winter's doing things. <laughs> and I'd run out and jump through the window or something. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I was not a very good student. Uh, I, I had very poor concentration. And I was scared to death of the blackboard. Uh, there was something about, uh, when I, uh, to me, nothing today scares me like when the teacher would say, I remember we had Miss Metzger who was a very unusual woman. Uh, she, well, uh, I don't want to go into a long story. <laughs> that, but she was tough and could have made a sergeant easily. <laughs> and uh, I was frightened of her. And uh, she knew that. And she took advantage of that, I felt. And she would say, John Winters, talk like a man. Uh, to me, a lot. I, that's unfair. But uh, I, she sounded sometimes like very, very strong. Uh, and she said, go to the board. And I said, yes, Mr. Metzger, I'll go to the board. And I was always turning to the student. And because I never knew where I was, I was never prepared. And uh, give, give me the answer quick. <laughs> and I'll never forget, there was a guy called Alden Sonander. There's a name. Alden Sonander. Alden Sonander turned to me and he said, we learn by doing. <laughs> I killed him at recess. <laughs> but, uh, I, we learn by doing. We learn by There's doing. always one of those. There's always one of those guys. Yes. And uh, bless his heart, he was a very bright student. He was the brightest guy in our class. I always remember that. He was pages and pages ahead of everybody. And I was pages and pages behind everybody. Uh, many days, I, I, I remember, uh, it seemed like I was sick a great deal of the time uh, because I wanted to be. 
<laughs> and uh, on warm, sunny days, I always had a cold. And I, <coughs> Mother, I, <coughs> I shouldn't go. I, <coughs> and uh, she'd grab me like this, she'd uh, <laughs> place me on the bicycle. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Bike to school, bike to school. A lot of times I roller skated, that was fun. Remember roller skating? Sure. Yeah. Roller skated and rode the bicycle, walked, ran. Happy child of those. Happy, yeah. oh yes. Fairly happy. Yeah. yeah, I was broke a lot of, you know. That, that's not fun when you're broke all the time. That's right. But I would lay for people in bushes and... Uh... <laughs> what were some of the jobs you did before you got into... Some of the jobs I did? Yeah, before you started... Before I... Started getting into show business. Oh, some of the jobs I did? I worked in a theater. I was an usher in a theater. So was I once, yeah. uh, before, uh, before I even got out of high school, I was an usher. In a That's theater. what I did. And I worked in a, in a place called the, uh, I think, gosh, I'm trying to think of the, the bar. Well, anyway, I remember it was a circular stage. And uh, I was going around on that thing and uh, doing little funnies. And I got something like $25 for the weekend and all I could drink and eat. And uh, then I uh, went into the service when I was 17, came out. And then I did a lot of things. I, uh, I One thing I always remember, I was. Uh, I worked for the Coca-Cola Coca Bottling Company. I was an inspector. Inspector. And looking for dead mice and marbles. <laughs> I uh, sat, on a little, sat on a little stool, you know, with a neon light, and did this. And uh, just watched bottles all day long. And then I, uh, I picked apricots and um, picked potatoes, uh, shucked corn. You probably did that in yeah, Nebraska. Sure. And, um, <laughs> and I worked. I was a fry cook in the Yellowstone. The Yellowstone Park? Oh, yeah, in the Yellowstone National Park. And uh, worked uh, 9 o'clock at night until 5 in the morning, uh, cooking uh, steaks uh, and uh, hamburgers and just little short order things. You've done a lot of things. For the, uh, for the uh, what do they call them? The, uh, I could never remember the guys. Um, park attendants. Rangers. Ran yes. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, kept people from the bears and things. <laughs> but, uh, oh, I did a lot of uh, cooking. I think most of us have done, uh, you know, odd, uh, Weird things. unusual jobs. We have to do something here? What are you doing here now? Well, we're going to sell a little something. Oh, good. And then Doc, Dr. Stillman will come out and... Dr. Stillman will come out and help us. So we can use it.